Hi guys, it's Elliot from Adfeeder. It's Wednesday afternoon, so it means it's another round of Web Wednesdays. Let's get it. As a kid, or even as an adult, there's always something so satisfying about ripping open a plastic casing away from a strip of cardboard. I'm talking about a 164 scale cars from the likes of Hot Wheels and Matchbox, of course. And despite being around for over 60 years and are just as popular now as they were back in the day, toy manufacturers need to quickly adapt to change in trends and company needs. With a spotlight pointed directly on sustainability, more and more companies have started taking alternative approaches to becoming more environmentally friendly. Matchbox has recently announced their plans to reduce their plastic use and aim to move towards almost exclusively recycled materials, as well as bio-based plastics by 2030. This won't just be the packaging either, with much of the models themselves being used from recycled plastics and other materials. And although this change won't happen overnight, the company is making meaningful steps to reduce their consumption of single-use plastics. Their latest power grab lines, for example, were displayed in an all cardboard box that still looks the part. We did wonder if Hot Wheels would be the first to make this move, but the concept behind Matchbox adapting first actually makes total sense, and Mattel's Roberto Stancini summarises the thought process behind this perfectly. He mentions that Matchbox has always been about realism, it's a reflection of the world and the vehicles that kids see driving on the road every single day, and as we're thinking about our brands and are thinking about where to begin, we thought, if this is how the world is evolving, then maybe Matchbox should too. The numbers really are piling up for Volkswagen. So far we've had the ID3, the ID4, rumours of a sporty crossover called, you guessed it, an ID5, and now this, the largest in the silent family, the ID6. The brand has also teased a new performance line for their EV range, with the ID4 GTX coming next week. And it looks like in Europe, most of the ID family will wear the logo GTX in the future. Think of it as a GTI or GTE, it stands for its own product brand and charges the world with electric motability from Volkswagen with new intelligent sport editors. Let's take a little look at this ID6, the large SUV that's been built exclusively for the Chinese market, but it's also going to be built there too. What makes this even more interesting is how it demonstrates not only how flexible the Volkswagen Group's MEB platform is in terms of size, but also can adapt to certain markets geographically. By conducting extensive market research, Volkswagen were able to tailor a practical, well-made and affordable EV to almost any desire, simply by removing the shell and keeping the battery and chassis components the same. Top Gear described it as being much like those interchangeable phone cases you used to buy for your Nokia 3310, and we can certainly see the resemblance with that. Monday was a big day for the biggest of all social media platforms. Facebook recently announced multiple new products that emphasise on voice content over text and images and even video. These products are set to be released over the next few months and in some cases will start with a limited number of people. Most notably, Facebook is launching a competitor to the immensely popular brand Clubhouse with a feature called Live Audio Rooms. This is set to be available in the summer. It will first roll out to groups and public figures as a test, but will eventually make its way into the Messenger too, so you can hang out with friends. As we've mentioned in Web Wednesdays in the past, it was inevitable that Facebook were going to come in and shut down Clubhouse's digital party, but we were surprised to see just how far Facebook is planning on taking the idea of audio over that of imagery and video content. To get people to join, Facebook says it's introducing an audio creator fund to support emerging audio creators. All of these conversations can be turned into sound bites, a forthcoming feature that allows people to create and share short form audio clips along with a feed to promote them. Think of it as TikTok but with just audio clips. Another topic that I've spoken about in very detail over the coming weeks, but the Apple electric car may have just taken one giant leap towards the future. According to reports in South Korea, Apple is set to sign a memorandum of understanding for the production of electric vehicles, with a joint venture company recently created by electronics and battery specialist LG Electronics and the automotive contract manufacturer Magna. Despite the internet still being discussed, the reports are that a contract is very nearly being signed, and LG and Magna are set to create an e-powertrain with Apple, under which they could handle the initial volume production of the Apple electric vehicle. This could all be a little bit of idle gossip, but the stories on this topic do seem to be building momentum as the months roll by. It's likely that Apple is most intended to use its first generation electric vehicles as an opportunity to evaluate their marketability despite it's said to be one of the most talked about and desirable products the world has ever seen. 
Who knows what the future will bring on this one, but at least we know the Apple car might just be on its way. As always, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for next week where we bring you more news from the world of automotive and tech.